Murderers, The Hope of Women. This is an EP from the 80s by Momus. I'm a big fan. And what's interesting about this EP is that a couple of weeks ago, I did a podcast interview with a chap called Julian Standen, who is the founder of the Gear Sluts Forum. And prior to him running that forum, he used to be a record producer. And it turns out that he produced this EP, one of my favorite records from the 80s. Just, I love the songs on this. And then another EP that I've been smashing lately, although not on streaming services, I've got a download of this. This is an EP by Calibre, so drum and bass fans will know who Calibre is, but this is not an ordinary Calibre EP. These are two versions done by Mark Anestis. So techno fans will know Mark Anestis as one half of what was Basic Channel. So one of the biggest names in dub techno to come out of Berlin in the 90s. And I've been playing some of their stuff through Kobo's recently. This is Philip's track, one of their most famous cuts. And you can see that I'm using the Sonos app. It says Sonos 5 here, because today we're going to talk about Sonos. So this is the Sonos 5, and along here there are three mid-bass drivers, along here there are three tweeters, and this one goes this way, and this one goes this way, and this one goes this way. So you can use this as a standalone speaker, and it will try and fake stereo with its directional tweeters. And then on the top, you can hear how squeaky the plastic is, on the top we've got playback controls, and then the back we've got power socket, Ethernet and an analog input, and that's it. And I haven't even been using the uh, Ethernet, I've been using these Wi Fi. So the only thing I need to connect to get this up and running is just the power. Now, I would never ever recommend you buy one of these on its own. Why not? Well, because it doesn't do proper stereo. So when music is made, like Mark Anestis's versions of Calibre or Momus's work with Julian Standen, they concentrate on left channel, right channel. They create a stereo image. So you can hear that when you, you know, even when you're using the most basic headphones, you kind of get this sort of fake image, this illusion in front of you. This on its own does not give you that illusion. And this is not cheap. It's like 500 and something euros. So if you've only got 500 euros to spend, I would recommend you go and buy two of the Sonos ones, the smaller ones, one here, one here, stereo pair them, and you've got proper stereophony. Now what I'm gonna be talking about today is two of these paired in the same way. So you can see one behind me here and this one is gonna go there. So Sonos call a pair of fives the two room pro set. And I guess they're assuming that most people would use, you know, one five in one room and one in another. But I'm interested in stereo pairing because of, as I've said before, because of stereo imaging and Pairing these two behind me is just a piece of cake inside the app. And I was up and running within five minutes, you know, playing music. And I found like in my six meter by five meter room that I got, you know, decent, robust sound pressure levels, SPLs, about 50% on the volume dial for most recordings. Now, right out of the gate, there is a gotcha for analog sources. Because there's so much DSP calculations going on inside the speaker to manage the way that it projects sound. Because when you turn them like this, they have a different sound profile to this. Because when they're like this, you assume you're using them on their own. Stereo pair like this, and it stops the, the tweeters beaming so much in like two different directions like this. I think it pulls the image a little bit tighter, I think. Anyway. With that DSP comes a delay. So I connected my Xiaomi Mi Box S's analog output into the analog input at the back of one of these speakers. And it does the you know, stereo pairing no problem, even for analog sources. But 
TV was unwatchable. Lip sync was, I don't know, like even half a second, even a full second out. And that also manifests if you want to connect a turntable to the analog input on the back. You lower the needle, you're waiting to hear the needle drop, and you watch the needle drop, and then half a second or a second later, then you hear it. Unusable as far as I'm concerned in those two particular scenarios. So if you're not using the Sonos Play 5 to watch TV or you know, listen to your turntable, I don't really know what analog sources you'd use. A Walkman, a tape player, a reel-to-reel, -reel, I don't know, no. Nah. So that meant in order for me to keep watching TV in the evenings while I was living with the, these two fives here, I had to pull out the Kef LSX, put those on a set of stands, and then digital out of the Xiaomi Mi Box into the Toslink input of the Kef LSX. No lip sync delay, no DSP delay, just great, just perfect. And then that sort of sets up the comparison that I'm gonna talk about today because the LSX, a pair of those, sells for roughly the same price as a pair of Sonos 5s. One of the first things I noticed with the two fives was the imaging. In that it's a bit diffuse, it's a bit woolly, the top end isn't super crisp, and I do wonder if Sonos made that a deliberate voicing choice because they expect most people to be using these speakers with lossy sources like Spotify or Apple Music or SoundCloud. And that means they're not as specific in drawing player outlines between the speakers as the KEF LSX. But it bears repeating that the differences, the audible differences between say, Spotify and Tidal, or Cobas, like lossless streaming services, can easily be heard with both sets of speakers here. Another thing I noticed out of the gate was that the, the Sonos are a little bit vague, a bit standoffish in the mid-range. I mean, I think the, the LSX in comparison are mid-range champions. At least that's what I thought until I applied Sonos's room correction. It's called True Play, and you can only do it with an iPhone. Luckily, I have an iPhone here. So I implemented True Play, so basically you have to click Start, and it generates some tones, and you walk around your room waving your phone around like a bloody idiot. You feel like such a chump doing it. Um, for about a minute, a minute and a half, and it sort of maps the room and then adjusts the speaker's output accordingly. And I found that the sound quality from the uh, fives really improved once true play had been done. So with that DSP magic, if you like, it changed the sound of the Sonos fives. It brought vocals out of the shadows a bit. It made the mid-range a bit more prominent. It also made the top end a little bit cleaner, keener, and crisp. I don't really like using the word crisp because I see many people using it as sort of a, a catch-all word for great sound quality when it isn't. I'm using it very specifically here to describe what I hear from acoustic guitar strums. It just gives the leading edge of acoustic guitar strings just a little bit too much zing. Only a smidge, but you know, it's my job to call this stuff out. Still, Sonos sounds much bigger than the LSX. It's wider, it's taller in terms of soundstage drawing. The LSX are much better with depth and with image specificity. So in, in terms of stereo imaging, the KEF really do have it all over the Sonos. Now in the low end, the Sonos for me go deeper, they have better control, and that lends them a more muscular robust sound than the LSX. So I'll give you an example about how that low bass works. This album, and specifically this song, Fallen Angel from Robbie Robertson, I can imagine this was just smashed at audio shows during the 80s. But with good reason, this is a terrific sounding album. And at the start of this track, there is like a very low bass sound that sounds like it's coming from very far away. And the Sonos communicates that much better than the Kef's. On dynamics, the KEF is kind of like a one inch punch. And the Sonos has this longer swing, which probably is why it sounds bigger, bolder, 
more exciting. And so if you're into acoustic music, jazz, female vocal, I really think the LSX is the better loudspeaker for you. Whereas because of the, the, sort of the gargantuan nature of the, the, the Sonos's soundstage draw, its bigger dynamics, its lower bass, it's better suited to modern music. So music like the Easy Star All Stars, or Deep Chord, or Björk, but also hip hop, R&B, um, a lot of the music that people complain that they see too much of on Tidal. I have no complaints with it personally. What I'm saying here is that a pair of Sonos 5s are more of an all-rounder, so better for a broader range of modern music than the LSX, comparatively speaking. So for the Momus EP that I mentioned at the start of this video, I prefer listening to this through the KEFs. But for the Calibre and DRS and Marconestis EP, I prefer listening to this through the Sonos. But what about functionality? Because for many people, myself included, functionality is just as important as sound quality. I mean, you could have the most amazing speaker system, streaming loudspeaker system, and if its app is garbage, you'll never want to listen to music. Now, fortunately, Sonos have one of the best apps out there, bar none. I mean, it's, it's, it's super slick. It makes onboarding the speakers on your network super easy. There is probably no other app that I can think of that really gets close to this for a single product. Yes, I'm a big fan of Rune, but that is for different audio systems. I mean, Rune can stream to Sonos, that's a good thing. And we can do Spotify Connect with Sonos, and we can do AirPlay 2 with Sonos. We can do all of those things with the LSX as well, but Sonos also has another little ace up its sleeve in that we can do Tidal Connect from a smartphone. You can't do it on the desktop for some reason. The desktop app doesn't show Sonos systems, but the smartphone app does. So what was I playing yesterday? Yeah, I was playing some hard floor yesterday and using Tidal Connect to do it to the Sonos. You can't do that with the KEFs. And not only does the Sonos system inside the app allow us to integrate, I don't know, there must be what, 30, 40 different streaming services. With the KEF you can only integrate Tidal and Kobos. And the KEF also rely on two apps, Control and Stream. And comparatively speaking, they're very agricultural when sat next to the Sonos app. They work, but I don't love using them. I mean, for me, if I'm streaming to the LSX, I'm gonna use Rune or I'm gonna use my Xiaomi streamer or I'm going to use Spotify Connect. I'm never going to use the, the KEF apps really to stream Kobo as a Tidal, even though they do UPnP and things like that. I just, I just don't really love them that much. They're okay and in isolation they're fine, but when you put them next to the Sonos software system, it's just no contest. However, KEF give us an infrared remote control. It's not amazing, but it gets the job done. And the KEF LSX also give us high-res audio support. So now I'm at the end of living with a pair of Sonos 5 for three weeks and have compared them over those three weeks to the KEF LSX. I couldn't tell you that one is definitively better than the other. Some things are better in some respects on the KEFs, other things are better 
in those respects on the Sonos. Yeah, and there's just not a clean line between them. And I find that really interesting because a lot of audiophiles tend to dismiss Sonos out of hand before, before anything really, they just kind of go, Sonos, garbage. And my experiment here tells me that is absolutely not true. And for me, they establish a streaming speaker baseline. So if you're thinking about getting your first pair of streaming loudspeakers, you might want to consider trying out a pair of Sonos's fives to establish a baseline. If you buy them from their website, the Sonos website, I think you can get them on a three month trial. And then if you don't like them, you can send them back. And that will give you a very good starting point from which to judge other streaming loudspeakers. So there's no clear winner here, not in terms of sound quality anyway. But when it comes to the software side of things, Sonos' ease of use, its streaming service integration, and its room correction smarts make the KEF look pretty basic, actually. And I guess I shouldn't really pick on the KEF here because I can think of so many streaming products where the app that comes with them is, is like super basic, like the Premier Prisma NP5. It's a little streamer like this. Great sounding piece, but the app compared to the Sonos, there's just no competition. So a bit like Rune really, what Sonos have shown me here, what they've reminded me of, is the importance of the user experience when it comes to streaming audio from the cloud or from a server in your house, because the Sonos can do that. You can even stream music from your phone directly to them. It's just that Sonos really understand that a loudspeaker system, an active loudspeaker system, a streaming loudspeaker system, isn't just about how good it sounds. It's about the whole experience. It's about how easy it is to set them up. Are there any you know, connection niggles when you wanna put them onto your Wi-Fi network? Is it easy to stereo pair them? Is it easy to add streaming service support? Does the app crash? No, it doesn't. It's never crashed on me once. So Sonos really show what's possible from a UX, UI, yeah, user experience point of view. So if you found this video at all interesting, useful, entertaining, then please hit the like button down here. If you like my attitude towards, I'm, I'm loath to say high-end audio because I can hear people grumbling. I can hear some of you grumbling saying, well, the story is not high-end audio. Well, that's the point is that I'm not, I'm not snobbish enough to dismiss things out of hand without first trying them. So if you, if you dig that attitude that I have that I will try something just for kicks actually, and I'll add this, is that basically my Patreon supporters enabled this video because they give me a budget to go out and buy stuff that then I can make videos about. And they paid for these loudspeakers and I'll be giving these two fives back to my Patreon community next month. So yeah, if you dig all of that, then please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.